Here we go. Three, two, one, and we are live for Bid Nerds. Welcome to Bid Nerds, everyone. My name is John Polnick. You found the channel where you can nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day, on cars and bids, and bring a trailer. Uh, there's my little lower third, so you know my name and how to spell it. I'm sure you're going to send me a bill for something. Uh, my partner, <laughs> Michael Deeb, is right there next to me. Now you can send him an invoice for something for wasting your time with our horse. Horrible, horrible advice. Uh, we have a good time here every day talking about our favorite cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer. Um, I'm coming to you live from the Las Vegas Strip in beautiful downtown Las Vegas, whereas my partner over there is in the Bay Area, live from San Francisco, right. California. Right. How you doing, Michael Deeb? Awesome, JP. Good morning. Are you? Oh, you kicked my ass. Yeah, even though you kind of kicked my ass yesterday. Yeah, so uh, we have a little competition going every day. We predict what we think our most interesting cars of the day are going to uh, bid to or sell to or not sell to. We predict, we, we, you know, we analyze the market and we give you our expertise for whatever the hell that's worth. Um, and we take our best get and we, we, we want you guys to join us uh, in those predictions. Tell us in the comments below what you think of our predictions and give us your predictions. But uh, Mike and I have been keeping tabs on ourselves. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, let's quickly go over yesterday's cars, what they yeah. went for, and what we predicted they went for would go for, and see what the yeah. reality was. Let's see how how far away reality and our you know crystal ball uh, did yesterday. Let's uh, w which car do we want to? Let's see. You're going to go down the list there. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so we started with the on cars and bids. There was a gorgeous uh, 2012 E63 wagon with some miles. I said 31.5. You said 32.5. And that car split our bids at 32,000 sold. Uh, so that was a draw. Wow. Um, and then out of uh, Oakland, California, was that cool little Ford Cortina, the right-hand drive car with the S2000 drivetrain. I predicted 24,000. You were a little softer at 21. That car actually brought $30,250 and sold. And I won that one. And it was all downhill from there for me. Mm. Um, as you took the 2008 mercedes-benz clk 63 black uh, i said 108 you were a little softer at 101 and the car only brought ninety six thousand dollars which was probably less than 10 where we uh, look at it that was your first of the day and then you kept rolling with the 87 920 s4 out of canada i said 26 you said 27 that car brought 32 and sold it really was a nice car jp yeah um, i'm still surprised and, that that one brought money given that it was in canada but uh yeah yeah yeah, but remember, though, the car was sold in New York, and so it was yeah. uh, imported Canada, and I assume it's even easier to bring it back. Uh, and then finally, that uh, 91 Ford Probe GT. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I, the car was at 65 when we were looking at it. I said 68, you said 67, and that car sold at 65. It didn't bring another dollar at the bell. So there you go. Three wins for you, a win for me, and a draw. Good start to the week for JP. All right. Well, that was yesterday's cars. You're not here for yesterday's news. You're here for today's updates, right. today's big cars of the day. Uh, let's get to the to, let's get to today's cars. That was too many yeah. days in a row. <laughs> okay. Cool. So on cars and bids, um, this is a 1995 Mercedes Benz G320. Uh, our good friend Rami's had a couple of G's and a couple of squares, the really big ones. Um, and I think you and I are both uh, fascinated by these vehicles. Um, this early version was not originally brought to the U.S. This was a Japanese uh, car that somebody imported to the United States. Um, out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, this is a no-reserve auction. So we're looking at um, what is kind of a metallic dark gray black color. Uh, it's got 95,000 miles. The drivetrain on this sort of shorter wheelbase version is the 3.2 liter inline six with a four speed automatic. Um, this is just a tiny version compared to the ones they eventually brought, the four doors they brought to the United States. Uh, but this is kind of a no nonsense vehicle, uh, no rust, no real known flaws other than regular wear and tear that you'd expect from a hundred thousand mile crossover uh, that was imported to the United States from another country. But a really good looking car, and it's kind of got the more modern luxury appointments with wood and control and leather. And I even think there's an airbag on JP. Uh, surprisingly, at Japan, it's still a left-hand drive, but all -wheel drive with a couple of transfer cases. That's just a cool car, and it's sitting at twenty-eight thousand dollars on just fourteen bids. JP, would you buy that thing? 
Absolutely. I love the Mini G. Um, I, you know, I actually kind of like this better than the four door. This would be, so, I, I don't know if there's yeah, a better cool. setup, honestly. You know, this is like, uh, you know, it's not like the early ones where, you know, and I'm a fan of minimalism, of course, but the early ones have diesel engines and, you know, and they have like zero power. This has a good engine. This car will actually get out of its own way. It has power right. to cruise freeway speeds, um, but it's not as big as the big four door. So it doesn't have as much weight to carry around. It has a shorter weight wheelbase so this is going to be more formidable off-road it does right. like all g-wagons have the lockers front and rear um but it has just enough luxury without all the air ride doodad suspension of the newer ones um you know it still has an air like you said still has an airbag uh and air yeah. condition does this one have air conditioning that is something that uh sometimes you find oh. that they don't have uh yeah. which i would I, assume I, at this year it probably does I would think it does as well. Uh, it just seems like it's a more contemporary build and yeah. it's like a luxury vehicle. So I'm yeah. going to say blindly it does. Quite honestly, yes, I absolutely would buy this car. And, uh, you know, where is it sitting at right now? What's your bid? Uh, so it's at $28,000 on 14 bids. Good action out of mm. Philadelphia. Um and the car's been in the U.S., so it's on a U.S. title. So this is an easy car to transfer to any state in the lower 48. Um, I like this vehicle, and I think there's still a little bit of room left, and it's in really good condition. I think this car will bring $35,000, and it'll sell at that price. Yeah, I mean— It's a, um, it's a no reserve. This is a really nice one. The the like I said, the baby G's are not something that you see very often. They do make a convertible version of those. The uh, yeah. the you know sister soldier moment. She that was her big rig back in the nineties. <laughs> um, you know, and looking underneath here too. The other thing too is it looks. I mean, for a uh, sorry about that, guys. For a east coast rig it's looking really really clean under there i mean you would yeah. think that this is being a four-wheel drive is something that whoever owned it on the east coast would have driven it during uh the winter but it sure doesn't look like it and this thing is just clean as a whistle oh look at that's got a right. little brush guard and stuff like that um yeah. i'm gonna get strong on this i i'm probably gonna this is probably gonna burn me um but uh i'm gonna say 39 on this mm. uh, i don't think it quite gets to 40 but uh the baby g's are very popular um and a clean one just does not come around very often and i know that doug demiro himself is a huge fan of these and maybe he buys this for himself yeah i think he has one <laughs> uh yeah he does he does as a matter yeah, of fact. yeah um yeah i mean i think this honestly it's like it's before we move on to the next car it's like in yeah. this era what is this a 90 what year is this one again uh it's a 95 95 you know so you're looking yeah. at a at either this or a Land Rover Defender and uh -huh. I am a massive fan of Land Rover Defenders I think they're one of the greatest right. vehicles of all time but this car this mini uh, this mini G-Wagon or baby G-Wagon is way more usable this is something that's going to be much easier to live with but still has that boxy utilitarian look um, oh is it as God, formidable off-road as a as a you, as a defender I don't know just, but Huh? You, you've just offended our entire British UK audience. Just <laughs> off right now, they said Mercedes is better off road in the mud. Our defenders, oh no, I didn't say that. I said I said this is much more livable. The uh, the defender oh, is definitely oh, oh. the better vehicle off road. That's yeah, not at all oh, what yeah, I said. Just, Let's be clear here. I thought I, I thought you said formidable, and I thought you meant that this was a better off road vehicle. So I, I misunderstood no. you. Heck no. Okay, no, cool. they are both formidable off road vehicles. The Land Rover yeah. Defender is certainly the better off-road vehicle, but the okay. Baby G is the more livable of the two day day. kind of Spartan, utilitarian, European off-road vehicles. This is a car okay. that you could get in, drive every day, drive to work, and occasionally go off-road. Whereas a Defender, <laughs> if you're driving a Defender every day, it's work. You're like, mm, man, I'm yeah. going through a lot to look as cool as I do right now, <laughs> but I'm going to feel it, right? I've got to have yeah. to really believe. Whereas the, the Baby G, get in that thing, turn it on, it drives like a G-Wagon, like a modern G-Wagon. Um, yeah. yeah, I do want this car, but uh, yeah, I think it's a bit cool. out of my price range w all already um yeah. so yeah let's uh good luck to good luck to the seller and uh can't wait to see what this one actually goes for all right yeah uh, i agree on. with you that early that early 90s for Mercedes great era when you think of the double 124 and this class yeah. back then, yeah. cool car okay so we're gonna jump over to burn trailer and we're looking at another no reserve option this 1979 alfa romeo alfetta gtv but this is a turbo delta version. So basically, Alpha made 400 of 
these cars to homologate the turbo on this car for group four racing at the end of all the photos jp while you're scrolling you may see uh something that looks like a brochure and it looks like one of these cars on steroids and that's the actual group four race car that um I don't know where it raced, but probably sports car racing throughout Europe uh, and actually did really well. The GTVs came with a front engine inline four with a rear transaxle. So these cars had great 50-50 weight distribution. They were two liter, normally aspirated motors that were rear wheel drive with a five speed transmission um, and, uh, you know, synchro mesh and uh, twin cam. These cars were really fun to drive. And these were actually very usable day-to-day -day cars. If you look at this, JP, it's a it's a real two plus two with a hatchback. A uh, very cool car if you were a young man or a young professional in Europe living in a modern city and you had a car that you wanted to take out to the coast with your hunting for the weekends. You could you, you might do a lot worse than a, an Alfa Romeo Alfetta GTV. Uh, super cool cars. Later versions of this car came with the V6, the 2.5 liter V6 that was in the Milano. But the early versions uh, used the basically the GTV Alfa Spider um, drivetrain. And that's what this car is. But this unique one that is offered to us out of Munich, Germany... Um, has the turbocharger, which brings a, basically that 120 horsepower motor up to about 150 horsepower, and that probably 95 to 100 foot-pound of torque all the way up to 170. So even though it didn't make a lot more power, it probably felt twice as strong because it's got almost twice as much torque. Uh, so I imagine this car is a hoot to drive and very rare. I would I would venture a guess that this car was never officially brought to the United States. So um, the person who buys this that might be stateside and brings it in, you might have the only one in the country. So just a very cool, very rare car that might be hard to venture a value on as the car is sitting in Munich, Germany at $22,500 on a no reserve auction. Yeah, I mean, how difficult is it going to be to find parts for something like that these days? I know the GTVs in general are getting more and more difficult to I don't think yeah, like I think the turbo a, and stuff. Holy cow. Yeah. The turbo could be a problem if that's the thing that goes, uh, hopefully you find a mechanic that is, um, smart enough that can rebuild the existing turbo if you didn't shred it. Mm. Uh, but as far as all the rest of the parts on this car are shared with a regular GTV, Alfetta, um, sedan. And, uh, and there are a couple of dismantlers. There's one in, in California, uh, alpha parts exchange in the Bay area. Um, and they, you could find parts for these. I don't think that would be the problem. It would be the turbo if it goes. But and I would still trust that these are pretty strong cars. Is that livery, the rainbow livery on the side? Is that factory? Is that something that yeah, somebody added in the eighties? Yep. And somebody raced the car that looked exactly like that. So uh, again, at the end of all the the images, JP, if you can find it, is a picture of the actual race car, and it it looks exactly like this car with a big hood scoop. Um, and deep dish, like uh, gaudy looking wheels, which are really cool. Um, so that, that is not raced. this car. That's just one that looked just like it. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, that's the car they raced. And so the homologation special is painted the exact same way they painted the race car. The, the black hood, which on the race car is probably fiberglass and the rainbow turbo delta livery on the side of the door. That was uh, that's how they raced. So, I mean, it's yeah, racer replica. It's one of the photos right next to that. Pretty cool, though. Very, very cool car. Got to love a hot hatch um, uh, from, I mean, would this be considered a hot hatch? Is this like a pre-hot hatch? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. It, it's kind of from that era. It's a little bigger than a Golf, um, yeah. but it sort of fits that mold. So, yeah, I would think this is considered a Those hot hatch. Those back seats fold down, right? I mean, don't they? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this car also answers a, a question I've always wondered the answer to, which is, could you turbocharge a carbureted car? And the answer in this uh, according to this is correct this yeah. has dual carburetors and a turbocharger which is just a rare setup yeah boy that'll never blow up uh okay so uh with uh just two hours to go it's sitting at twenty two thousand five hundred dollars you said it's in europe so yep. that adds a whole level of complexity for our american buyers how hard is it to bring a car like this into america yeah, um, I think it's still pretty easy. It's just expensive. I think you know you're looking at minimum seventy five hundred to nine thousand dollars to bring this car in and have somebody handle all the paperwork for you. And what's interesting is just in the time that we got started, this car jumped from thirteen thousand dollars at no, at nine a.m. It went to twenty two, and then somebody else bid it up to twenty two five. So this car has already uh, overshot my 
my pre-written bid on the car. Hmm. Um, and it's a no reserve auction. So I, it seems like somebody really wants to, at least somebody just wants this car. So I'm going to raise my bid up to, I'm going to say $27,500. Twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna work off of your enthusiasm. Um, I love you know uh, Alfa Romeos. I love the GTVs in general. This is obviously a car that's way out of that norm. So yeah. I've got to lean towards your expertise, and um, uh-huh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna bet the over. What did you just say? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven five. Yeah. Twenty-seven five. I'm gonna go twenty-eight five. There it is. Uh, I, you know, I'm hoping it breaks thirty. I hope this guy, whoever has this car, uh, gets all the money for it, and I hope someone in America pays to get it here. Uh, I would love to see this on a coastal range rally um, yeah. or Auto Fest next year here in Las Vegas. All right, moving on. Very cool car. Let's see what do we got next. <clears throat> okay, uh, so keeping with the theme of of relatively modest but rare cars today, we, nothing is that expensive in our collection. Mm-hmm. On Bring a Trailer, um, I picked out a 1992 Toyota Land Cruiser. This is called the HDJ80 Diesel Five Speed All Wheel Drive Land Cruiser, and somebody has kind of done this thing up um, with the. Uh, go anywhere uh, snorkel for the induction system so you could literally go across a stream or river uh, it's got some big knobby tires and uh the jp polnuck approved <laughs> roof rack uh luggage rack to carry your spare tires and your gas cans and the thing i think it's missing jp is a is a proper light bar there seems to be like one accessory light oh no that's the snorkels yeah so it needs a light bar it needs a jp polnick light bar but the toyota livery the manual transmission the fact that it's a 4.2 liter inline six with no turbo diesel um this is your true overland vehicle if ever there was one i, I jp please explain to me why i'm in love with this car it's so freaking cool uh offered to us out of uh, Voorhees, New Jersey, with uh, showing 168,000 kilometers, which translates to 105,000 miles. Um, this auction does have a reserve, but it's sitting at $20,000 already with about two hours to go. Um, I've never been a huge fan of the modern Land Cruisers, but man, JP, this thing gets me going. I really like this car. Yep, you love it because it is the ultimate urban overlander. We've got those big ARB style front and rear bumpers. You've got some aftermarket lights, which I'm not terribly excited about. Um, the snorkels are really interesting. You know, they are by design for going through water, like you said, uh, so you can submerge part of the vehicle. Uh, but really, the best use for snorkels is to get the air induction up above the dust layer. Um, yeah. Very often, when you have vehicles that are going off road, they're suck. You you know, they're close to the dirt and they're sucking all that dirt in there. So it's really nice to get cool, clean air to come in uh, from the top. And that's really the actual use for snorkels, contrary to popular belief. Um, Good. Yeah. Um, light bars. I, you know what I love about this vehicle is that it does not have a light bar. I, I agree with you. And I think you mean that it, it would be awesome if it had some off-road lights, some rally-style <laughs> round lights. Uh, typically, yeah. when we say light bar these days in the off-road world, what you see is those kind of of modern LED strips, which I think look yeah. hideous, especially on like classic uh, SUVs like this. It's interesting that this is on Bring a Trailer Land Rover, or not Land Rover, um, the uh, Toyota uh, vehicles do really, really, really well on cars and bids. In fact, Doug DeMero just did a video about Land Cruisers and all the generations and how well they do on cars and bids. Um, so it's, uh, you know, that's in fact their most popular vehicle on cars and bids are Land Cruisers. So this one is just super dope. Uh, this is when they just changed the body style. Um, you know, this thing, had, this is really the birth of the modern SUV. There were SUVs in the Mm -hmm. 80s, uh, but then when this thing came out, it was it kind of changed everything. SUVs started getting very luxurious from Japan, and the the Uh, yeah, I was gonna say off. I was yeah, I was gonna say the qualifier there is luxury SUV because you know Chevy's been making the suburban, and families have been buying and taking that truck to the country, the river home or the lake house or whatever for for decades and, and generations. But absolutely, this was the luxury appointed, reliable. SUV, and I, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, a thousand. You know, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. There have been four door uh, off road vehicles like the the Grand, the Jeep Grand Chair, Grand Wagoneers, well, and all right, that kind of right. stuff back, way back into the sixties and seventies. Um, 
Um, but yeah, it was it was the early uh, '90s where just SUVs just kind of took over the market, and there was a lot of talk of you know our cars dead, our sports cars going to happen anymore. Uh, this vehicle, <laughs> uh, yes, done. Right. It has all the right. cool accoutrement uh, being, did you say this one's a manual too? Yeah. Manual. Wow. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big inline six, 4.2 liters. Nothing to, to speak yep. at. That's a, that's a big V6. So it's got a lot of torque, no turbo. So it's just a go anywhere grunt motor. And the low mileage. I mean, this is a 350,000 mile motor all day long. Oh yeah, yeah. This is an apocalypse car. This you said it's in New Jersey, which is great. Yep. So when New York melts uh, down and uh, <laughs> society breaks down into total chaos, you can get into your Toyota Land Cruiser uh, with all your machine guns and um, and what are, what are those uh, MREs? Your meals uh, meals ready to eat. Uh, I mean, this is you are good to go. You can live off the yeah. land in your Land Cruiser. Uh, totally. Yeah, this is this is road warrior all day long love this thing what's your bid cool uh, so you know I, i'm kind of guessing here because i don't really fully understand the values of these um it's at twenty thousand dollars with a couple of hours to go and uh and i think that this thing you know the big question for me jp is whether or not this car is going to break 30 grand mm-hmm. and it seems like the value might be there but it's a weird time of the year um i like what you said that that this particular model's done really well on the other platforms, so you wonder if the buyer is on bring a trailer. Um, I still believe in it, and I'm gonna just raise my written bid one thousand bucks up to twenty nine thousand dollars, and I believe it sells at that price. Yeah, um, this is the odd occasion where I think it's the wrong platform. Bring a trailer almost always brings more money for just about everything. The Toyota yeah. Land Cruiser may be. Uh, the difference and you know i'm just noticing now and you probably said it but this is a diesel um which means it's even more awesome i mean this is this is the off-road apocalypse vehicle i thought it was a gas one i wasn't paying attention apparently wow yeah yeah i'll go turbo uh, huh non-turbo yeah and it's a diesel jeez this is just the rig i'll go i'll go 30 and sky's the limit on this one i mean you just don't see him uh, with this kind of miles and it's very cool that it has all the cool stuff on it so yeah i mean it could yeah. it could it could see sky above 30 uh all day it's possible if somebody right, yeah, gets J- it for less J- than 30 they got a deal yeah jp pie in the sky what it, this thing could possibly bring forty two thousand dollars forty seven thousand dollars yeah I mean, it could, I mean, could it? In, in this, it could? this yeah. the, the way this one's set up. I don't, I don't know if one's gone that high yet, but yeah. you know, it doesn't, it's yeah. weird because there's not a lot of action here. There's only six bids, you know, it's got right. less than two hours. So boy, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's Possibly what I'll say before we go on. When you ask about that pot, yeah. that sky limit, it's, it's yeah. not so much. Will it or could it? It's, what the hell else do you get? Let's say fifty thousand right. dollars, and you want an apocalyptic video uh, vehicle. Vehicle. What do you get other than this? I mean, you're basically yeah. looking at an H1 Hummer, um, yeah. which is huge. Yeah, I mean, a Defender is not in the uh, Defender is not in the running. Defenders are well. I mean, maybe an old Series but, One Defender, but a but a modern uh, def- like not a not a current Defender, but let's say a ninety. Uh, uh, same era. Yeah. No yeah, way. Same era. Those things are what? junk. They, they break down, you know, and you'll never find parts for them. And, you know, in, in an apocalypse, I do not want a 90s Defender. Sorry, oh, Land Rover. Well, well, uh, today we're pooping all over the uh, Land Rover crowd. Yeah. And I love we're Land just... Rovers, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, you know, that is, look, how many, uh, how many ISIS terrorists do you see running around in <laughs> Land Rovers? Doesn't happen. They're running around in Land Cruisers because parts are everywhere. If they break, you can fix them with duct tape and some, you know, bubble gum and whatever you got, sticks and rocks. Um, They take very little fuel. A Land Rover is going to guzzle fuel, whereas this is a (laughs) diesel. You're going to be able to find diesel. And I mean, it's on and on and on and on. Um, So I think H1 is pretty much its only contemporary and an H1 is huge and doesn't have as much space inside. And it's going right. to take more fuel. It might be more, you know, bulletproof, but this vehicle is definitely the more, yeah, this thing will last forever. Um, 
Yeah, sorry. Going on and on All about right. this car. Uh, moving on, guys. Sorry about that. We are having a good time. Ner- we are super nerding out on the uh, Land Cruiser. I think uh, both Eve and I are going to be bidding against each other and trying to buy this thing today. <laughs> yeah, you you, bl- you played it out uh, well, Dan. kind of want to change my bid. <laughs> anyway, my <laughs> brand, brand trailer. Um, probably the most least interesting car we've ever reviewed. Uh, looking at yet another no reserve auction. This is a one owner, 1988. Nissan Pulsar NX. Um, I Wait a second. The least interesting car we've oh. ever nerded out about? What are you talking yes. about? Name one that's less interesting than this. This is awful. And I'm, I'm not going to drop another F-bomb, but just know that I want to. Uh, we're looking at a <laughs> 1.6 liter inline four with a three-speed automatic. I'm sure this car is front-wheel drive. I don't understand the taillights. I never understood this car in the first place because... It looks like it wants to be a sports car, but there is nothing sporty about it. It is truly a subcompact mini hatch commuter shitbox. <laughs> it's it's a it's a one family or one owner car with just fifty six thousand miles. Um, both front and rear bumpers pretty scraped up. There's no real damage or wear and tear to the car. The interior's actually held it up pretty well. Uh, considering what it is, I imagine this car is parked outside its whole life. It's got plastic hubcaps over steel wheels. Um, I cannot say enough terrible things about it. JP, did you notice it has 13-inch wheels? Good luck trying to find tires for this boat anchor. Um, out of South Pasadena, California, um, and it's dumped. Oh, my God. It went from $2,288 to $2,388 with just two and a half hours to go. JP. Why on earth did you pick this car? <laughs> so you can you can dump all over this car for all the obvious reasons, and I would agree with you for most of them. But saying it's the least interesting car, it could not be more wrong. This car <laughs> oh might God. be the most interesting car we've <laughs> ever talked about. The Nissan Pulsar NX in 1988. This is the second-gen Pulsar. Uh, this car was amazing back then one thing that uh th- this car as bad as it is i mean it, it it's very reliable it's a good daily driver you know in the 80s it was one of those cars that you could drive this thing for two hundred thousand miles if there's no frills you're right it's front wheel drive you know this one in particular is an automatic so snore but from a utility and fun point of view and inexpensive this car has t-tops uh this rear hatch so this is the sedan hatch, right? You can see mm-hmm. my cursor going along the line. Yep. This whole piece is removable, and <laughs> you can buy a wagon back. They have a complete interchangeable back end on this car. The Nissan thought, you know what? For people that are living in this urban area and they don't they don't want to buy three or four cars, but they want a car that's sporty with this notch back, and then they can get this. They can make it into a kind of a wagon thing. I mean. How often why, do you hear what's that? And why would you do that? Is that if you wanted to gift the car to your cleaning lady? Why would you make it a wagon? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe you wanted to go camping and sleep back there if you're short. Oh uh, you, I mean, there's a million different things. The, the fact the, the fact that a car company said, yeah, let's try this. Uh, is interesting alone. You just don't see car companies taking risks like that. This whole piece came off. You could make it into a wagon. How amazing! Huh? And the top and the t tops. I, I so Rochelle actually had one of these for a little while, I was and it was for actually that, yeah. fun to drive. <laughs> piece of junk. I, it I, never broke down. Course, on her. Michelle's was a manual, of course, right? Uh, it was, and actually, the the thing about it was, is that, you know, we didn't like own it. Own it. It was one of those things. A yeah. friend of mine. It was his wife's car, and she had it for yeah. like brand new, and it had. I don't know, 200,000 miles when they gave it to us. And they're like, can you sell this for us? And uh, at the time, we lived uh, in downtown Seattle. We had this teeny little apartment in the city. Uh, we only had one parking spot. So I was like trying to find places to stuff this thing in the, in the middle of the city. Like we were in Belltown. There's no park here for this. I'm like putting it in alleys oh and stuff. And, uh, so yeah, but uh, so we, I, when I say we had it, it was like we had it for a couple of weeks. But, you know, yeah. it was actually... You know, in the summertime with the T-tops off, uh, it was... 
no more or less fun than driving a Volkswagen Rabbit of the same era. I mean, didn't have, it had about the same power, handled about the same, drove about the same, um, yeah. and honestly was more utilitarian than uh, than yeah. say a Volkswagen of its uh, kind. Yeah, but you know, not worth anything. Um, I think it definitely has some redwood appeal. If someone had both of those rear hatches, you never ever see that would be a pretty cool display at Radwood. Um, that would. Yeah, uh, Michael Deep. Um, other than a pine cone and a pile of dog crap, what's your bid? So, JP, I will give you <laughs> $2,688 not to park this on my front doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's just cheap enough to make me want to go buy it and uh, make, drive, it up to, uh, drive it up to San Francisco and uh, leave it out there for you. You come outside, that Robbie, would be... Robbie. Rami will blow it for you. I think I'll give you that. <laughs> this would be a great car to, to destroy on the Rami show. You know, uh, okay, so you're at 26 what? 2688 because it, it's $100 increments and they're stuck on this 88 thing that I don't think they'll get off of. So it's at 2388 yeah. now. So I'll give it another 300 bucks and then it's gone because it's a no reserve. Yeah, I'm going to say it goes up to 3300 bucks. Oh my God. I think it's All just right. kitschy enough. I'm probably wrong, but, uh, you know, yeah, there it is. Pulsar NX. You got to look up. Oh. If you haven't seen the commercial for this car, I still remember the commercial for some reason. Uh, the jingle, <laughs> Pulsar NX. And they had the, those, those rear taillights <laughs> with those goofy lines that they have in it. They yeah, had, like, yeah, these yeah. graphic lines shooting across the oh, screen. Man. It was just the yeah. stupidest thing. Yeah, yeah. Probably had neon, break dancers it, or something. It, it, if you go back to this era, right, of the late 80s, early 90s, neon and smoke sold almost yeah. anything on television. It's pretty funny. I am and, surprised that this thing is, you know, old guy beige. Uh, most of them are like orange or red or champagne. Yeah, it's called champagne. Champagne. <laughs> the champagne yeah. room. Yeah, totally. Or, or from Japan, it's sake beige. <laughs> yeah, everybody pay attention to the main stage. We have Crystal in the champagne room. <laughs> All right. Last Good car, on. JP. Um, I think we have saved maybe the best car of the day for last. Hmm. Uh, 2004 Porsche Boxster S 550 Anniversary Edition. This is a six-speed manual car that is just on 47,000 miles out of Fairfield, California. Um, I kind of like this car with the cocoa leather interior and the brown top. Uh, it's got the GT Silver painted 19-inch wheels. Uh, and I'm a big fan of these wheels. Jimpe, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the same wheel that's on the uh, anniversary, the 40th anniversary. They are, they are called so MYO2s and they're 18s, yeah. yes. Yes, okay, 18, sorry. But uh, very cool car. Um, it's interesting. These special editions always got the sport exhaust. Porsche did a lot of them, and they always made like five horsepower more than the regular ones. So instead of making uh, around 260 horsepower, this car made like 265. Uh, but otherwise, it wasn't really a, a performance thing. It was really just the uh, cosmetics. But I really love the color of this car, and um, there's no mention of – the IMS bearing being done anywhere in this listing. So I'm guessing that it has not. So keeping that in mind, you, you kind of wonder where this car is going to land, knowing that you probably, if you intend to drive it, you probably want to just go ahead and do that $3,000 service. Uh, but I like that this is a numbered edition from Porsche. So to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the 550 Spider, Porsche made 1,953 of these, 1953 being the year that the 550 was introduced. This car is number 230. Um, and just kind of a nice, clean, low-mile example. I mean, think about it, JP. If this car hadn't timed out, it'd still be under warranty by the miles. This is a very low-mile example out of Northern California. Um, do you like it as much as I do? Um, I, I appreciate this car. I, I do like a lot of the things that it has that all the other boxers don't have. That perforated seat, the perforated sports steering wheel. Yes, the yep. Mocha interior is fantastic on that uh, GT Silver. Um, not to just repeat what you said, I love this gear shift knob and the stamp. Yep. Um, I don't see these. I'm, I'm a little under impressed by the name i mean giving a car the the name spider um sure. i think the the things that they put on this car to to give it that extra panache were not nearly enough the sport seats aren't enough the the perforated steering wheel the color not enough they needed to go like they did with the newer boxsters 
excuse me with the spider mode and you know get rid of the the, the mechanical top and make it very spartan lighten the thing up, yeah. do all the things that really would have made it a 550 i don't see these really the value of these don't seem it from what i've seen i haven't seen any of them that, like anybody paying a premium because it's a numbered 550 spider it just looks like a regular boxer with better options and it does have better options but not really that much better um great right. car yeah yeah, well, yeah, I mean, the, go ahead. Yeah, the best thing, the best thing they could have done, um, this does have the PASM, but the best thing they could have done for this particular car was give it maybe 10 more horsepower and a limited slip differential, which they just hadn't done yet. I don't think they did it LSD until they did the uh, the actual Boxster Spider and the uh, the Cayman R, if I'm correct on that, JP. Yeah, yeah. I think, and, that, I think those are the first two models to get limited slip differentials because they never wanted this car to humiliate a base Carrera. Yeah, and an M96 engine with no IMS with low miles is a bit scary to me. I mean, if I see this right. engine with 80,000 miles with no IMS, I don't really care because it's like, all right, you know what? The IMS is probably holding up. Uh, but with low yeah. mileage like this, and I'm always concerned about the things that weren't done by the factory uh, crank sheet, um, you know, the there, there's all kinds of other seals that like to let go on this particular engine, and most of them did it with low miles when the cars were under warranty and the factory paid for all that stuff. Um, we're not talking about hand grenade type stuff like the IMS, which will destroy the engine, but you know, just little stuff that will drive you absolutely up the wall and, and cost a lot uh, to take yeah. care of. So, uh, yeah, do you have a bid on this car? Yeah, so it, so the car's sitting just under twelve thousand dollars. It's in Northern California. And it's got low miles. It's a special edition, but I think I agree with you that there's no quantifiable premium for this particular special Boxster. That being said, a low mile Boxster S, you know, should be worth in the high teens to low twenties, uh, being such low miles and nice condition. Subtracting the IMS bearing of about three grand, I, I think this car probably brings eighteen thousand five hundred. And I would say that if the IMS was done, it would be low twenties, but it hasn't, and that would be a problem for the next buyer because he's got to deal with all that crap. So eighteen thousand five hundred, and I think it sells at that price. Yeah, I mean the the IMS is a three thousand uh, dollar. It's not even. It's like twenty five hundred, but whatever. It's it's one of those things yeah. that honestly replace the clutch because you, when you replace the clutch for twenty five hundred yeah. bucks, you throw in another five hundred dollars and they replace the IMS. So at that point, just say, yeah. hey, I'm in for a clutch replacement, and can you update the bearing while you're in there? That's the way to go. Now you have right. a two thousand four boxer with a brand new clutch and a uh, little bit of peace of mind. So yeah, so your bid was eighteen five. That's correct. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go 19.5. I'm gonna. I think it's just gonna go barely over that. This car does have a lot of action. Um, it's gonna take a while to creep up there. Um, I'm scared that this is gonna just stall out at like 17, and I'm gonna lose to you. Uh, but I'll go over on this one anyway, just because it does seem like there's a lot of action, and uh, it is a neat car. And maybe, maybe this is now we're finally going to see the premium for the 550 anniversary edition. This might be the first one that we see a premium for. But honestly, at 20 grand. Between you and me, if I'm yeah. looking to spend twenty grand on a Porsche, and I'm willing to get a Boxster, the next generation Boxster is the one to get because you could easily get a slightly higher mile, not anniversary edition. So let's call it a 2005, 2006 Boxster. So set, we're talking about second gen. The looks are um, yeah. way better. Uh, you know, light years ahead. And all the performance, everything about that car is better than the last, the the dot two of the set of the first generation. For twenty grand, I'm definitely looking for a 2005, 2006, or 2007 Boxster S. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So solid we'll, advice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, is that all the cars today? Yeah, that's all of them. And I, if okay. you look at this as a whole, JP, this is probably the most modest collection of cars we've ever reviewed uh yes you could buy all these cars for 100 grand <laughs> except for maybe the 92 land cruiser that could uh could see huge numbers that could given that up. we're close to the end of the world uh while we're at it let's say uh, let's give a shout out to our <laughs> sponsor guys customs make sure you go on to guys customs and order your custom made bracelet for men who love machines we have uh my uh we got a little submariner yeah. match with the guys bracelet here that looks really cool you can get that one on the guys uh custom site uh go to guys underscore custom on instagram that's spelled g-y-x not uh, g-u-y-s yeah. so guys custom yeah. that's g-y-x 
X guys underscore custom on Instagram and order yeah. your individually made guys custom bracelet today. Michael Deep, yep. thank you for uh, being here today and doing another set of yeah. cars. For those of you watching, thank you. Subscribe, like, and share. We're a new channel. We really would love your help to get the word out. Make sure you tell us about the cars you'd like us to review in the future. Let us know what you think about our predictions on price. Give us your predictions. We really want to kind of see what you guys think about what we're thinking here. And we'll see you tomorrow at the 9 o'clock hour right here in the same place. Thanks, guys. Awesome, JP. Peace out.